HYLCM, Seatsolt CIM, in the highest of your honor, we have spectacular environment group, You Won't Be the Same, one of the very first groundbreaking efforts of environment movements in, the, in Western Canada, could be Canada. First off, we have uh, like to thank our guests from Kis Kitsilano arriving with us for update on celebration of SPEC. And, uh, Carol and Richard, we're humbled that you could join us. Please, uh, what are the acronyms for SPEC? Well, it's interesting that you start off saying spectacular because uh, that's one of the ways that we think about SPEC, that it's pretty spectacular. It means society promoting environmental conservation. It's a very old kind of name because it started 48 years ago. Congratulations. Yeah, it's been amazing. And SPEC has had a very venerable, mm -hmm. venerable history over those 48 years doing a lot of things that have to do with watershed protection and air quality and water quality. Many of the things that we're so grateful for in the region that undergird the sustainability mm -hmm. of the city of Vancouver were really things that SPEC brought into existence. Since then, of course, there's been a multiplication of environmental organizations, but SPEC has remained a kind of sturdy, on the ground, doing work. We work with children in schools, we work with adults on a whole lot of of uh, taking care of the various kinds of waste that we produce and how to be really good stewards with, uh, with the things that we use. And we work with farmers, city farmers, that is, people that are trying to do commercial farming in the city of Vancouver or around in other areas um, by teaching them the kind of skills that they need. Most of them are young people mm -hmm. that don't really know all that much about farming but we have experts on our board who help them to learn the skills they need. So there's a whole variety of ways through our committees that we work very directly with a lot of people on urban sustainability in, in, in many, many ways. Quite a variety of uh, networking in yes. 48 years. Yes. Um, Richard, for you, what would be the highlight for par community participation? I was really privileged to employed by SPEC quite recently. I actually got uh, my beginning of my career in waste management with SPEC in 1990. Uh, lived in Vancouver Island, came down here to find out how to do it. Great project. And SPEC were in recycling everywhere before Blue Box happened. And so I came back to live here in 2013 and SPEC had an office right around the corner. And I volunteered for their great, relatively new project called the Elder Circle. And before long, I was employed as the project coordinator. So for me, it's a, it's a wonderful circle to come back around mm -hmm. and I am now of the age where I'm an elder and our whole project is about reclaiming elder wisdom. Great. There was actually something that I realized as I was moving into my elderhood. I'm 75 yes. now and I realized that there's a lot of things that I felt is important for elders to begin to look again at the role of being a wisdom figure okay. in society. You're a First Nations person. Mm -hmm. You have deep experience with a culture that mm -hmm. has continued to honor the role of the elder. Yes. And we don't really quite know what that is, but we have an intuitive sense that it's important that wisdom is in short supply in mm -hmm. the Eurocentric community mm -hmm. and in the uh, understanding of our relationship with nature okay. and the importance of seeing our interconnections as, as human beings and with other creatures. And so we feel that we can draw on life experience but also commit ourselves okay. to develop some of the attitudes and the skills of wisdom that have been lacking. So for community participation, what kind of endeavors uh, do the Elder Circle include in the community? We've got a number of different opportunities. Uh, we've held four salons right now, and salon okay. basically is open to the public, although it's focused on elders. It's also, we've had younger people too. And it's an opportunity for people to come out and actually get engaged. So we have the opportunity to contribute directly, to get engaged, to deeply discuss what it means to be an elder. Our byline is reclaiming elder wisdom. So what does that mean? 
How do you reclaim elder wisdom? Okay. And we're finding people get very, very passionate about this topic because, as Carol was saying, in the sort of more European, more recent tradition, it's almost lost, so hence reclaiming. And so the idea is how can we actually discover it and bring it forward and help people do that. So we facilitate that through our salons. We have also other groups mm -hmm. that we have started to go and walk in nature. And we have a life review process as well. So. Greatly appreciated. In, in closing with that, would you be able to offer the viewers inspirational note? Like, do you have to be members of SPEC or something that could, you could offer the viewers tools that got you to reach your goal? Well, I would say that there is a variety of programs that are offered by SPEC that people would enjoy connecting with. The Elder Circle is certainly something where we're hoping to attract increasing number of, of, of elder people. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that the most inspiring thing is to say everybody has inherent wisdom. It's a matter of finding the connections with other people to help you bring that forth. Thank you and so much, yeah. Carol. And Richard, in closing? I would say, come and be part of this incredible community. We're about community. We're about coming together. That's what we stand for. Do yourself a favor. If you're elder, youth, any age, you can become a member of SPEC. You heard it here on Stories from the Salish Sea, and we're humbled and honored that you could invite the public to join such an, uh, a spectacular group yes, and you. participate with Environmentally Sound right from the whole family, Tiny Talk to the Elders. It's great appreciation. Thank you for joining us. Mm. Thank you.